Photography has lots of great names. We've got Leica, Canon, Nikon, so many. One of the leading ones must have been for a long, long time, Roly and Roliflex. And I want to talk about one of the early Roliflexes. And today I have a Roliflex standard. Now, Roliflexes are often divided into the old standard and the new standard. And the old standard is a black face like this. Um, but it was the first Roliflex that took 120 film. Um, I was really surprised a few years ago, my godmother bought me uh, bought out a Roliflex which had belonged to her dad, and she was very proud of this camera, and um, rightly so. But to my surprise, it took 620 film. And the first ones did. Well, but the old standard takes 120. And a fine looking camera it is too. Now I'm going to try to take it out of the case very carefully. Right, first of all to load a film. The film goes bottom here through, through the spindle here and then through here through the tip spindle to the top. Now to set the film so you load it and you've got a window at the bottom because at this time the 120 films were only marked for eight exposures, six by nine exposures. So what you had to do was wind on until you got number one here, reset the counter here and that will set the counter here to one. Now the viewfinder I don't know if you can see it here, but it has a really interesting device. It has a little spirit level in there. It has a circle within a circle, and this was to enable you to hold the camera nice and straight. Because you obviously hold the camera like this and shoot like this. So you've, so you've got the film loaded, you focus to the side, and you have, again, this great um, design where you can see all your aperture and your shutter speed just by looking down. So I'm going to set this to 300th of a second which I think is the fastest on here at f11. And then to set the shutter you bring that over at the bottom and that is your shutter set. And that is all there is to it. I say all there is to this camera, but it was a complete ground bake breaker, was the roller flats. It meant the cameras were getting smaller. The quality of the 120 film was improving. And this was used by portrait photographers. It was used by the likes of Lee Miller, um, um, Cecil Beaton. A whole lot of photographers moved from difficult to uh, manoeuvre plate cameras to these film cameras. So it might not look advanced now, but it was when it was introduced. And let's see how I got on when I took it out to see how it would come out. The first photograph was taken in early one evening in a Dorset Lane and you can see the sharpness here, you can see the good range of tones. I am using, what am I using? I'm using former pan and I'm really pleased with the range of tones as I said on this camera and the sharpness of the lens. I suspect it is a coated lens. Um, I'm not completely certain about this but the camera being a new standard, I think dates from about 1939. I think they, they only made them from 39 to 41. I am really pleased with the performance here. As you can see, not only is it sharp, it's very clear. The film is nice and flat. The camera is really light to use. I was really surprised, and I perhaps shouldn't have been, but how nice the camera is to handle. I've used Roly cores of the same era, and they just haven't been as good in the hand to handle. But this is sharp, it's accurate, it's got a nice feeling to use. Plus, 
as I said, it's light and it's very, very quiet. It is so quiet, in fact, that you wonder if the shutter's actually working. I suppose the only reservation between this and what came later was, was not having a self-cocking shutter. With this shutter, a bit like on the row record, you have to bring the shutter over at the front um, in between shots in order to set the shutter. It doesn't do it by the lever rind. Plus, I think you need to be quite gentle with the crank handle that if you weren't careful <coughs> you could though it does stop <coughs> at each number um, I could see problems there um, these photos for these scanned images I've hardly done anything to them um, they, I was fortunate in that they didn't seem to have be any just on the film these are taken in Wiltshire actually at a wonderful castle called um, Warder Castle and I thought it was a very fitting subject for this really lovely vintage camera. Um, I haven't seen many um, of these in my time and we end with a classic view at Shaftesbury. Um, they don't seem to fetch an awful lot of money. I suspect quite often they do need servicing. Um, but if you do find one of these little gems, um, I would thoroughly recommend it. A really interesting design and a camera which really did, I think, change the whole face of photography. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.